everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you a few of different types of yarns and hooks and teach you which ones are good with what hooks in order to make your crocheted projects, whether they be blankets, throws, toys, doilies, curtains, whatever else you could possibly think of trying to make with yarn and using a crochet hook. Um, there are multiple different types of yarn as I have set up in front of my camera right now. Um, we have the Red Heart Aran, which as you can see is a nice thick strand of yarn. Um, this is more of a USA style um, medium number four weight yarn. Um, in Australia this is more of a, um, a 10 ply, but um, it's more, it's a USA style yarn found in Australia. Um, not a lot of USA style yarns are found in Australia. So that is one of the thicker ones that you can get. Um, then we've also got a chunky acrylic, which as you can see is quite large, quite chunky, and you can see all the strands in there. Um, this is good for making large heavy blankets because of the thickness is quite warm to work with and to have as a blanket. In Australia we have something called a Lincraft cake. Um, it is very similar to the Mandela yarns or a, um, a self-striping yarn cake that you can get in stores like Michelle's or Michael's, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, in the US. Um, I know a few people overseas who have shown me some of their cake yarns and uh, from what we can work out, the Lincraft cakes are very similar to the cake yarns that you get. It's a 200 gram mass, 80% um, acrylic and 20% wool composure. Um, I like working with the Lincraft cakes because they do have a mix of 20% wool in there and they're nice and warm and easy to work up. They don't pill as much as some yarns can. Um, then we have a cotton and acrylic blend, sorry, and it is one of our finer materials to work with. So if you're making doilies or curtains or um, fine intricate detailed items, something nice and thin like this is very good to work with because it shows up all the details that you're trying to get from your pattern. Um, then we've also got chenille. Um, chenille is, it's a fluffy type of yarn with a main strand on the center. It actually has a, a main center piece in there, but it's got this fluffy texture to it. Um, there are quite a few different types of chenille you can get. Um, another one is this beautiful, I'm going to call it cotton candy looking one. All of the beautiful pastel colors in there. It's a kind of red, kind of blue, kind of yellow and majority white mix. But um, Basically, these are the same items, just different companies made them and they have different colour schemes. Uh, then we have a normal type of yarn that most people would find. Um, in Australia, I get this from Big W. Um, it's just a normal 8-ply acrylic, just 100% acrylic. Um, recommends a 4mm hook. I never follow those instructions ever. Um, and then we've got something uh, that's called a variegated yarn, where it's not specifically striped, it just changes colour whenever it feels like it. Um, this is actually a very important yarn to me. This belonged to my grandmother. I've never used it. Um, I'm not even sure if Have You Any Wool still exists, but um, it is a beautiful yarn, and I'm just waiting for a special project for that one. So with your hooks, you can get ergonomic handles or you can get plain. Um, these are my ergonomic handled hooks. Um, my favourite hook to use when I'm making toys or anything with fine detail that is not a doily or curtains or whatnot, I use a 3.5mm hook. You can usually find the numbering for your hook on the bottom. It will either have numbering or as some of these ones have, this one actually has H 5mm. This is a F 3.75mm or an L 8mm. Um, other hook size types you can get are these metal handled hooks. Um, 
for my smallest hook that I use is a two millimeter hook. And as you can see, it has a very, very tiny hook onto it. And that's something that I would use this type of uh, cotton blend with because it is a very good size to hook with. Um, when making something with a chunkier yarn, I would recommend something between, I'm going to say about a six and an eight millimeter hook. So if I'm using this L eight millimeter hook, I will definitely be using it with my chenille or with my chunky yarn here, the dark pink one, because it will make it easier to see your stitches, especially with the chenille. If you have smaller, tighter stitches, for example, if I was to use my H five millimeter hook with this chenille yarn, I wouldn't be able to see my stitches and then I would not be able to continue my project. It would be very, very difficult. So eight millimeter hook for chenille or chunky acrylic is always the better option, just so you can actually see your stitches to work into them so that you can finish your project. A uh, five millimeter hook is usually pretty good for um, these medium number four weight yarns like the Red Heart Aran, uh, the Lingcraft Cakes, or anything around about that size, anything that kind of calls for, well, that one says 4.5 millimeter US number seven knitting needles or 5.5 millimeter hook. Um, on the Red Heart Iran, so I'd go for a 5mm hook if I'm making a blanket or a throw, possibly even a floor mat and some toys depending on what I'm making as to whether or not I need tighter stitches. If I need tighter stitches, I always size down my hook from what I would usually use. Um, other good tools to have when working with crochet, you always need to have a tape measure. Tape measures are really, really helpful because you've got your inches, you've got your centimeters, you've got your millimeters. Now, if you're working something with a pattern, it'll tell you the size that your item should be turning out to be. To have a measuring tape on hand so that you can check your sizing with your pattern is always very helpful. You need a pair of very sharp scissors. Uh, sharp is good. Try not to use scissors that you use for cutting paper or using in the kitchen because they will be a little bit blunter and they may fray the end of your yarn, which will give it not the greatest effect if you're trying to thread it. And speaking of threading, uh, always have a embroidery needle or a needle with a wide eye because it makes it a lot easier to thread the end of your yarn on when you're trying to tie in or sew in your ends. Um, I've got this one that has a tapered end because I like to fish through my yarn strands to really tie those ends in nice and tightly and it makes it a lot easier to do. And with the wide eye, I always say wide eye because it makes it a lot easier to thread your needle with because you just do this, you do that, pull it through and it's threaded, it's done. That was so easy. And if you've got a smaller eye, it's a lot harder to do and you most likely will need a needle threader, which can be a pain in the butt with some of the different types of yarns that you can be using. Some of them will be too thick for the eye and some of them can be fluffy. There is fluffy yarn out there. I don't like it, but there is fluffy yarn out there. Some people use it and it is very difficult to thread into a needle. Uh, thank you very much for watching my tutorial and I will be back very soon to show you how to make something cute. Thanks, bye!